Hello, uh, this is Christina Biggs. Christina is part of a group who's revived the Portishead to Bristol Railway to improve sustainable transport links um, and work directly with the Mayor of Bristol to ensure the city improves air quality. Christina's background is in science and she's going to tell you a little bit about how that ties in to what she does now. So Christina, could you tell us a little bit about what your current role is and how science has played a part in that? Yeah, so at the moment I'm campaign lead for our group. Um, the group's called the Friends of Suburban Bristol Railways. Um, it's a campaign group and also a rail user group. So we're all volunteers. Um, but what we're trying to do is to persuade um, local government to invest in local rail. So the idea is, as you mentioned, Porsche's headline um, used to have a railway line. It was taken away um, a while back and we've been campaigning for this line to go back in again. It's currently used by freight, so um, uh, yeah, stuff's bringing um, cars from Portbury, for example. Um, and so you'd have thought it'd be quite simple uh, to just get passenger um, services going again. But it's needed, um, in terms of science, it's needed a lot of reading reports, um, picking out the right information, presenting the information in a really clear way because people like the Mayor of Bristol and other politicians aren't scientists. So I've been a bridge between the, the actual nuts and bolts, all of the endless numbers and charts and long, long reports, and, and just knowing what to pick out, how to explain it, um, and how to present it in a really simple way. So I, I use pie charts a lot, um, bar graphs, things that you know hopefully anyone can understand. Um, but where it's come from are some really dense tables of data. So, <laughs> great, thank you. Um, and what did you want to be when you were at school, Christina? Oh, I wanted to be a scientist, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, research scientist. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm about to go into that now, so that's amazing. Great. Um, what were your favourite subjects when you were at school then? Obviously, science, one of them. Uh, physics, yeah. Physics. I love physics. Um, I love geography, actually. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And they tie in quite nicely together of, of what you're doing now. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you find school generally when you were at school? I, I was really happy, actually. Um, I was in a, um, a private girls' school. Um, and what I loved about it was that we, we all realised we had different talents. So I was a kind of class brain box. Uh, and whenever there was a test and I got a particularly high mark, they'd go to the other class and ask, the other class what their top of class had in their test is like oh uh, tina got 96 percent in her physics what did rachel get <laughs> there's that sense of, of really valuing each other and realizing that being a brain box wasn't the only thing there would be the girls who were good at gym the girls who were good at drama or singing and, and we had that sort of equal equal status yeah that's great um what would you tell yourself if you could go back to your year 11 self so your final year at school what would you what advice would you give yourself um regarding kind of your working life gosh <laughs> i think be willing to do anything and um, don't don't just think cause you've got a dream that that the only way to get to that dream is the kind of straight way um i mean there was a time when i was um, in oxford and um, I tried for teacher training and it didn't work out and I just had to time onto a temping agency and for a while I was just helping um, a secretary for a chemistry journal edit stuff and it was really boring but I did it for six months and then that led on um, I, I did some tutoring and you, you just have to do anything that's there don't don't be too proud just just do what's there Definitely, definitely. And it, and it tends to open up other opportunities that you might have Absolutely. not thought possible. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what did you go on to study at, at college and at university once you finished your post, uh, your 16-year-old six, education? Yeah, no, I was, I was really lucky. I, I got into Cambridge. Um, uh, I did a year out and then went straight into Cambridge, did the natural sciences tripos at school. So it's, it's a brilliant course because it takes you right across the sciences. Um, I did um, physics, chemistry, um, mineralogy, uh, which is interesting, and that got me into what I'm doing now. Uh, and then I went on to do a PhD, uh, also at Cambridge, uh, and then I did a postdoc, um, postdoctoral research associate post in Birmingham for a year, wow. and then I went to France for two years. Great. What did you do in France? What, what was your career in France? Oh, that's the second postdoc. So I was working a, 
a big scientific institute in Grenoble, um, which is they've got a nuclear reactor for experiments, and then they've got a it's called a synchrotron where they send electrons around. And it's a bit like CERN, but a bit smaller. But it's okay. great fun because there are lots of different people from all over the world. Great. Um, and what skills do you think you have used, thinking about your current role now, um, that you, so you mentioned a little about the being able to read the data um, and, and transferring those into, into graphs. Are there any other skills that you have gained from science um, that you now use in your current role, but perhaps you wouldn't have thought of using? I think you just, you just realise there's a language to science and it just as in you know, English, you know, right, there's nouns and there's verbs and you know, if you know what kind of word it is, then then you're kind of a bit safer. Um, so you just you just tackle it. You know, it could be an un unfamiliar science and it's some weird word. You think, okay, is that a kind of special term? Do I need to know what it actually means or roughly? Um, so it's around the language of science as much as the numbers of science. Uh, and you also learn to ask the right questions in terms of reliability and where did that come from. Um, it's always a good idea to go right through and w read the document that it, everything came from rather than just taking someone else's word for it. Um, it's a confidence. You get a confidence with science. You, sort of, you just feel you understand stuff. You, you feel you understand where to fit new information in. So you're not kind of overwhelmed. You're just thinking, oh, right, that's in that box. Right. Thank you. Um, and finally, what would be uh, your advice to our students now that are perhaps enjoy science, but maybe don't necessarily see themselves in a, in a science role when they're older, um, maybe don't necessarily see themselves as a scientist in a lab, but are thinking that maybe they enjoy science and could use those skills. What, what would be your advice to those students? Just enjoy it, you know, enjoy your science studies because you don't get a chance like this, you know, um, you're being you know you're being fed stuff <laughs> um and and just try and take the time to understand what you're being fed you know, don't just think about the exam on its own but think do i do i get this um i think you know while you're studying through exams you yeah you know, use your workbooks don't just do it once and think right just do a few of them to sort of get into that particular exercise and understand why why does why are we doing it this way and ask your teacher you know why does this work? Where did this come from? Why? What's this formula about? Um, but in are you talking about in terms of forward planning and, and your career, or just right now? Yeah. So right now and forward planning and career. So if so, if we have got students that are particularly interested in science and they do want to go into a science career, um, I'm particularly thinking about girls as well because there's a, there's a big drive about trying to get more women into science yeah. focused careers. Um, what would be your advice? Okay. Thinking about what to do. I just I would pick a science that you you enjoy. Um, I, I would definitely go to university. I mean, it's a, it's a great opportunity. Um, I know it's a bit daunting with these having to borrow money to do it. Um, but the, you know, you, if you don't earn enough money to start off with, you don't have to pay back until later on. Um, but it, it also look at apprenticeships. Um, but I think it's probably a good idea to go ahead and get a, a degree now while you can, while you're still young and your brain's functional. <laughs> um, and, um, and, and, you know, go for a PhD, you know, after that. And just, just get as high up the ladder as you can while, while your brain's still fresh. Um, yeah, and, 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 you know, read stuff, read around the subjects. I mean, there's new scientists, isn't there? Um, you, can, you can find out some quite wacky things that people get up to, but I think, central to it is actually the science degree that that you have to get that to any to do any sort of science career i'd say great thank you christina that's been really useful